welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. 2025 is the 10th year in which I've been posting a video on this channel every single Sunday. And to celebrate, I thought we'd have some occasional videos across this year that look back to some of the best bits of explaining computers. And I thought we'd start with the PC builds. Over on explainingcomputers.com, if we click on PC builds, we find all of my builds in chronological order, with the first one being a mini ITX Atom computer from 2010. This I build as a green PC, as I wanted to make a very energy efficient silent machine. And I use this PC for all of my web and writing activities for about four years. This build is so old that it was filmed in standard definition. It was based on an Intel D510MO motherboard with an embedded dual core 1.6 GHz D510 Atom processor, with this being coupled with 2 GB of DDR2 RAM. The boot drive was a 40 GB Intel X25V SSD which was the first SSD I ever purchased and is still working today. Building a green PC was the 15th Explaining Computers video, and I remember being very keen to ensure that I showed exactly how everything was put together, rather than just talking through the components and then presenting a finished computer. The video was the first I made of a real project, although when it was finished I seriously considered not posting it, as I wasn't sure it was right for the channel. But I'm glad I did decide to upload, as it got over half a million views and set the template for many videos to follow. However, I do regret that the video remains the only Explaining Computers episode without a piece to camera at the end. After the green PC, my next build video was in 2012, and featured a dual-core 2.4GHz Celeron G530 processor, which was fitted into a Gigabyte 861MA D3V motherboard. Here the RAM was 8GB DDR3, with storage provided by a 74GB Raptor hard drive and a DVD writer. Everything in this budget build was then fitted into a rather nice CIT gaming case, which I've used for several builds since, and which came fitted with four case fans, including two on the side panel, along with two others back and front. And for some reason, all the case screws and other hardware came in a really well made orange bag. As often in my builds, I had some fun and games fitting the I.O. shield. But once this was in place, the motherboard and everything else went in with no issues, although I do find it surprising how retro the motherboard looks only 13 years later. Jumping ahead to 2014, it was time to replace my Atom PC with a more powerful Mini ITX PC built in a thermal take. Element Q case. Here the processor was a dual core i3 4300T with a base frequency of 3 GHz and cooled with a rather lovely Noctua low profile cooler, the first of many Noctua coolers I've since employed. These were both fitted to a Gigabyte Z87N Wi Fi motherboard, which also made friends with 4 GB of DDR3 RAM. On this occasion, the I.O. shield was very well behaved and snapped in very easily. And even in a relatively cramped build, I also had no problems fitting the motherboard, as well as a front USB bay that also accommodated a 128GB Samsung 840 Pro SSD. And for good measure, on top of this, I also fitted a DVD writer. In some respects, this was one of my most successful builds ever, as the computer ran for nearly 10 years before I decided to upgrade to a silent M100 motherboard in late 2023. This said, in 2016, 
I made two videos about the construction of an i7-6700T system in a home theatre case. This was fitted with a Gigabyte H170M DS3H motherboard and was an upgrade for the PC that does a lot of my 3D rendering. And indeed, the system is still in use today. Once again, a low-profile Noctua cooler was used and this was the first system I built with DDR4 RAM. Oh, and I also remember alarming some viewers by running the system out of the case before doing the motherboard switch. In 2019, I made a six-part build series based on the Ryzen 3 2200G APU. This covered every step of the process involved in building and setting up an entry-level PC with onboard graphics, with the hardware then upgraded in later episodes. From the start, I thought very carefully about video thumbnails, and in part this guided my selection of the Gigabyte B450M gaming motherboard into which the 2200G was fitted. And it was most certainly the reason why I chose 8GB of red Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM, even though it increased the price a bit in what was intended to be a low-cost build. Colour choice was also why I purchased the Cooler Master Masterbox Lite 3.1 case with its red trim, and certainly influenced the selection of the MSI Gaming X GeForce 1080 Ti graphics card that I fitted in Episode 5. And if you're wondering why I used a 2200G APU in a build with a graphics card, it was because I wanted to show how a system could initially be built that relied on internal graphics, but which could later have its graphics upgraded. Talking of upgrades, in the last part of the series, I even added two front LED case fans and an RGB lighting strip, which was not to everybody's taste. However, overall, this build was very popular and I got thousands of comments and other messages from viewers who used the videos to help them construct identical or very similar Ryzen systems. Indeed, I will never forget the email I got from a man who wrote how he never dreamed that he would be able to afford, let alone build himself, such a powerful computer. In 2021 and 2022, I made eight videos that started with a fairly old PC that I purchased from eBay. In the first of these episodes, we saw how the computer could have its RAM upgraded, and then in the next, how it could have its performance improved by upgrading to an SSD system drive. And indeed, the SSD upgrade video proved very popular indeed. In part three, we added a PCIe card that allowed the addition of back and front USB 3 ports. And then we kept just the case and drives when we fitted an ASRock H410 motherboard coupled with a Pentium Gold E5500 processor. So, whether or not this was an upgrade or a new build, we can debate. However, things didn't stop there, as later I made a CPU upgrade video in which we switched out the Pentium Gold for an i5-10400. Two of my favourite explaining computers videos were when I took this PC and made it effectively silent by changing the power supply, CPU cooler and case fans. These were not very popular videos, perhaps because I labelled my activity as creating a quieter rather than silent computer. However, the final system was very useful indeed, as I use it all the time making videos on this channel. In 2023, there were videos of two builds, the N100 upgrade to the thermal take system we saw earlier, and also an updated Ryzen build using a Ryzen 5 5600G. This was completed in one episode rather than a series, as in recent years, series have become far less viable on the YouTube platform. 
Whilst making the 5600G video, I shot some behind the scenes footage for channel members, some of which I thought I'd now share here. Often in my build videos, there are close up shots that show how and where connectors are attached. Such shots are clearly impossible to achieve when the motherboard is fitted in the case as the camera cannot see through solid metal. And so, for each of these close up shots, I set up the motherboard on something that resembles the inside of the case and which allows me to record the connector insertions. And this means that when I make a build or upgrade video, the parts are usually put together and taken apart many times. Over the last year or so, the builds on this channel have taken a different turn, as in 2024, I focused on systems without an Intel or AMD x86 processor. Specifically, I've put together a Mini ITX ROC 5 system with an ARM CPU, as well as assembling two computers with a RISC-V processor. I've personally also found the construction of these systems to be very exciting indeed. However, I will now return to making build videos about computers with Intel or AMD hardware in the near future. So there we are, loads of PC builds, and there'll be more coming up on the channel in the future. In the next Best Bits video, we're going to look back to some of my favourite projects, including Ethernet wiring, hamster feeders and weather stations. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.